Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18. This is episode 8. This is called Once a Trader, Always a Trader. And before I get into this, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. My allergies are kind of acting up today. But, um, and also, too, I'm going to apologize. Also, the video is slightly late, just slightly, not too much on that. Um, because for those who are in the States, it is a holiday weekend and yeah, yeah. So, um, hopefully you're enjoying the holiday weekend so far. Um, sorry, hold on. There's a bug that's in this room and it's getting on my nerves. So I'm just kind of like keeping an eye on that. So if I get distracted, apologies ahead of time. I think it actually is a moth because it's actually on my ring light. <laughs> That's why I'm looking the way I'm looking because I'm like, I have a moth that's on my ring light and it's driving me nuts. But anyway, that's not why we're here. Let's, this, this episode was kind of a short episode, to be honest. It was only like 40-something minutes. Um, so yeah, but, and it, I don't know, like, it was a cute, fun episode, but to me, I don't think a lot really happened here, which was perfect because, again, it's holiday weekend. I'm not really trying to go on a deep dive when it comes to this, but anyway... Without further ado, let's get into the episode. So, the episode starts with Tamara, Emily, and Heather. They meet up at a restaurant to recap um, to Tamara. So, really, Heather and, like, Emily are recapping their version of how things went when it came to um, Gina's girls' trip. And um, also, um, you know, they opened up to her, basically, about how Shannon was doing when it came to the trip. And then, because they also were aware that Tamara did just meet up with Shannon to pretty much try to patch things up. And Tamara also shared that she invited everyone to her event that she's going to be doing, which the event itself was fun, but it was all right. I, I, I will explain why, why it was just all right. But it was a Traders theme event because for those who don't know, Tamara was on the show Traders, um, and she didn't make it very far, so I guess she wanted to try it again. I don't know. It was cute. It was a fun theme party, but that's what she was throwing um, later on the episode. And um, so after talking to Shannon, though, she decided she doesn't want to invite Alexis because of it's, it's, they can't really be together for group events. And at the end of the day, Shannon's a full-time cast member. Alexis is part is friend of. So, I mean, that's just how that was going to be. But she also did invite Vicky, too. So, Vicky's also invited as well. So, anyway. Um, I'm kind of still side-eyeing Tamara because... <sighs> it's Tamara. <laughs> she can't be trusted. But, anyway. That's kind of what, how the episode started. Next, we have... Um, Shannon, she shares with us that she did have to buy a new car because for those who don't know, when she did get that DUI, she actually totaled her car. Um, I'm not going to get into like how bad her DUI was. We all know what happened there. It was, she it was pretty messed up. And so she has the option, and, and this has been six months later, by the way, which I didn't actually really do the math on because I couldn't remember when she got the DUI. I knew it was shortly after the reunion was filmed last season. But apparently the six months has passed. And so she could either go the whole year with, you know, just keeping her license suspended and continuing Ubering and lifting like she's been doing. Or she can get, after the first six months, um, she can get a breathalyzer installed in her car, and then do that. So we actually see that that's what she's doing, and we see the rules of all that. And man, I've never seen this any of this in real life, like when it comes to like having to do a breathalyzer in your car. That's team too much. And I, we find out you have to re-breathe in it every 20 minutes. And I don't know if Orange County is like the rest of California. I feel like L.A. and stuff, it takes... 20 minutes to go like five blocks like the traffic in LA is the worst like <laughs> I'm out and for those who don't know that I live in Chicago like Chicago proper and the traffic is not as bad in Chicago as it is in LA 
And I've lived in Chicago almost 10 years now. It's not as bad. Even on a sh crappy day, it's not that bad compared to L.A. Everything takes forever to get to. So you basically need to plan out your day. This is what we're doing for the day. Stay in that general vicinity, and that's that on that. And um, I, I'm, I doubt if it's any different. The last time I was there, which was in 2019, that's how it was. And I was like, man. And I can only imagine when the Olympics goes comes to Los Angeles how much worse it's going to be. But anyway, neither here nor there. So we see that, and, you know, she also does share with us in her confessional that her business has been suffering because she's in the health and wellness industry, and she didn't feel comfortable advertising health and wellness stuff. <laughs> she, showed, she, you know, she got DUI, which is kind of opposite of being well, right? And she, you know, shares how she was ashamed, and so she just didn't want to put her name on the products. And even before the DUI, um, her business was kind of starting to dwindle, so it didn't help. So a lot of financial ramifications for that major mistake. And, yeah, I, I, that I know. <laughs> that is, a, it, 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 it does something. But anyway. So then next we have um, Katie and Jen. Um, Jen's at no, actually, Katie is at Jen's um, place, and they're at the yard, and they're doing yoga together. And um, so after they get finished doing the yoga, and it's a little bit of a fun scene, and tell Zero, this is Zero, he says hi. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, wow, he literally distracted me. Isn't he so cute? <laughs> Anyway, um, back to the back to the thing. So um, they get finished doing the yoga, and then they start talking about Heather. And Katie says she did try to reach out to Heather to kind of try to hash things out, and Heather didn't respond. And I mean, yeah. <laughs> so they're gonna try to. She's gonna try to do it, but. As we seeing in the future scenes, y'all know they didn't really patch it up. They they're they're being cordial, but that's about it. Like they're still shading each other in confessionals. And Katie, that's this that's the only thing that I don't like about you is this this thing with Heather. It was so forced, it was very wrong road. I really wish you would have just not done that and just would have focused on getting to know the ladies. Because I will say this, I do love Katie and Jen's, like, bond that they're building. So they both start sharing with each other about, well, Katie starts sharing with um, Jen about her first marriage and how tumultuous that divorce was and everything. And kind of giving, you know, um, Jen words of encouragement because, you know, she's suffering when it comes to all this. And... We learn more about Katie through this and that, um, yeah. And Jen's also, mentioned, you know, shares about how, like, her oldest, the one that we've seen, I think, in the last episode, the one that doesn't really have a lot of rules, he's kind of being a typical teenager about it. And, you know, she's saying, yeah, he's kind of having a hard time um, because we hear in the background he's revving up his engine and because he has a Mustang, he's revving it up and, He's like, is that your son? Like, who is that? And so, yeah. Um, anyway, so outside of the um, Heather thing, I just really wish she would have left that alone and just would have, you know, work on getting to know the ladies. Because Katie and Jen, they're, I, I, lo I love it because I think a genuine friendship could pot potentially bond, like, can potentially happen there, if anything. So, yeah. Okay. And so next we see um, Emily is with Shang and they're getting spray tanned. And Emily is pretty much almost butt ass. Like she has um, pasties on and a thong. And what I will say is whether you like Emily or not, she looks good. She looks good. I will give her that. I think last season you would have never seen her like be all in there like that. 
But I think she even knows, like, I feel like she's gaining her confidence. And hopefully, based off of what she said this episode and how, I, I think when it comes to Emily, she has a lot of insecurities, clearly. And I will say one of the insecurities she really needs to work on. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Sorry. I'm back. Um, the bug is still around. And... It's not, it's actually a lakeshore thing. So for those who are from Chicago, sorry, we're going to switch subjects, subjects real quick. If you live by the lake, we have these things. They're not gnats, but they're kind of like in the family of gnats, um, <laughs> which is quite ironic because the gnat is in this episode. Um, yeah, it's great how that somehow got tied together. But um, anyway, because I had the windows open today because it was a beautiful day today. Um, I think the thing that is a native to Lake Michigan, it's so I think it somehow got in the house. So that's what that is. It's, it's, it's not a nap, but it's in the family of a nap and it's very specific to Lake Michigan. For those who don't know, now you know. Anyway, so um, and because I live, I literally live right by the lake. Um, but anyway, so back to this. So. Emily looks good, but what I was going to say is that I'm hoping this season, along with her, you know, really working on her health and wellness and keeping it down, I hope this helps her gain her confidence because it seems like it is helping and it's helping her kind of deal with some of the issues that she has because clearly we know she's insecure. Um, that's been very obvious about how she's been projecting when it comes to a lot of the things, especially with Jen, and so that actually does come up, and... Um, so Emily does check on Shane's health firstly, and then she talks about her trauma and how Jen in a weird way indirectly triggers her because it reminds her of her mom and how she grew up and everything. Because we know Emily has a very tumultuous relationship with her mom. And um, Emily needs therapy. And she should not project any of that to um, Jen. And Jen's a saint for, you know, dealing with it, honestly. Um, but yeah, so in this scene, though, it really did appear to me that Emily did really show genuine remorse. Hopefully that's real. Um, hopefully no more of the I'm going to apologize, but then do the same thing all over again. Step and repeat because we're, we're sick of it. Anyway. Um, so that's kind of what happened here. And then next we have like a dual scene. So on one side we have Tamara with her daughter, Sophia, and they're driving together. Apparently Sophia, I guess, doesn't drive much because the way Tamara was acting in that car, she was acting like Tam, that Sophia just learned how to drive just recently. And I think she is college age. So I don't know. Um, Although, I will say this, I keep forgetting, um, whisper, uh, <laughs> so I keep forgetting that, um, kids learn to, don't learn to drive until later now. Um, when I was younger, it was, you know, 15 and then 16. I mean, I actually knew how to drive since I was nine, but <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway, so... Um, we do find out, though, that Sophia took a gap year. Um, basically, she took one year off from college. So she didn't go directly to college, and now she's trying to figure it out now. And Tamara opens up about, you know, the tumultuous relationship and how divorce really kind of messes things up. Because Sophia and her other child, Ryan, not Ryan, I think, I forgot what her oldest name is. But anyway... They're, they don't talk to the dad, but they talk to Tamara. And then we have the one child that we know that Tamara does not talk to at all because they took the dad's side. And it's definitely some unresolved issues that still is a thing. And while the, this is significant because while this is happening, you have Katie actually talking to her daughter, Kylie. And we found out actually in the previous thing with Jen that that ex-husband's relationship with Kylie was very tumultuous. 
And Kylie's not the biological father of the ex-husband, but he basically took the father role initially um, for Kylie. Kylie was the oldest one that we met earlier. And so Kylie is basically about to sign off on getting her last name changed um, to Katie's current husband, husband Matt's um, last name. She wants to actually officially have him be her biological father. Um, well, not biological, but like her adopted dad. I said that wrong. Adopted dad. And so it's kind of a big deal, pretty emotional. And um, so, and they're going kind of back and forth with this, these two scenes. And Katie does share that her and Sophia seem to like to have a lot in common. And they should meet up because they're about the same age. And we also find out we found out in this thing and also the previous thing that similar to Tamara, she has two kids she doesn't really see because of the divorce. So very similar situations. Um, and it, it's a very cautionary tale about, you know, getting married young and getting married before you're ready. Because in pretty much everyone's case that's getting the divorce or have had divorce, it seems like at least on this show, that's been the common denominator. Um, and then there's children involved too, which makes it even more muddy. Um, it makes me kind of like blessed that I just never took that route. Um, I mean, I've had close calls where I've almost had a marriage, but I've never actually went there. I've been, I've been engaged twice, so, um, or almost engaged the second time. I actually was only engaged one time officially. The second time, I knew what the ring looked like. And I kind of knew that the person was going to do it. And I sabotaged it. Because I didn't feel right about it. And I didn't even want... I, didn't even want, I did not want the opportunity to even say no. Because I would have said no. So instead, I just made sure that it, that it didn't happen. But yeah. Anyway. Um... <laughs> Thing. I, I want to go hold you. Like, I kind of got triggered a little bit here, too. Because talking about, you know, broken families, that's just never a good, good thing. So, anyway, but in the positive note, Kylie is at least making her version of her family whole by getting an adopt, gaining an adopted dad out of it. So, there's that. Anyway, next scene. Okay, so next is a day of Tamara's show. And it's a... Traders themed shows. So they're all dressed in their best Scottish looking garbs. And we find out, I already spoiled it for you, the Nat, aka Ted, Teddy Mellencamp, is the host of the show. And she was pretty much non, non annoying for the most part, but then she got annoying towards him because that's Teddy. Teddy is literally the Nat. <laughs> Um, it's funny though that this gnat that's here stopped buzzing around, but maybe because we're actually talking about the other gnat. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah. And Vicky's not happy, by the way. It, it was kind of comical because we know, for those who did or not aware, Vicky and Teddy do not like each other. Vicky calls... Teddy exactly what she is, which is Tamara's lapdog, because she is. Um, they even pot they have a podcast together, two peas in a pod. So yeah. And they're very shady on that podcast. They talk about all the housewives. And um yeah. I don't really care for Vicky like that, but when she's not wrong, she's not wrong. I mean, simply put, like Nat is a tryhard. She tries too hard. It doesn't come off natural. It comes off force. When it comes to all the other ladies, it just seems like that's her personality. When it comes to the shadiness and everything else. So, anyway. So, before they actually officially start the game, um, they kind of did start the game a little bit. So, we did get the, the traitor assigned. We don't find out till the end of the episode who the traitor was. And... Let me know in the comments after we reveal who it is. Were you that surprised? Um, I kind of wasn't. <laughs> I, I, I kind of, as a viewer, it kind of was given away for me. I kind of was like, yeah, okay. But anyway. Um, <clears throat> um, 
Oh, and also we already know Alexis is not going to be here. So before the game, they start doing any events and anyone, you know, drops dead or anything. For those who are not familiar, there's another show that's on Peacock called Traders. It's actually really, really good. Um, I've only seen clips. I actually want to go back and watch it. Um, there's like a tra Traders UK, and then there's like, and that's the original one, and then there's the American version, which is the one that um, sometimes the Housewives are on and Tamara's on it last season. Um, but anyway, so, um, and it's a game show type thing. Basically, you, um, there's a trader. Usually there's three traders, I think. And then the other people are called the Faithfuls. And the Faithfuls need to try to figure out who the trader is. While in the meantime, the trader pretends to still be a Faithful and just slowly kills people off. So you need to try to figure, figure it out and not get killed off. That's kind of pretty much the show. Anyway. Um, I know I simplified, I know I oversimplified it. There's more to it, but that's kind of what it is. And there's physical, mental challenges and all that stuff. But since the housewives are not doing all that, and they're only doing this like this episode. So it's kind of, to me, the way they're doing it is more like a more murder mystery version of what they're doing right now. Because it kind of is murder mystery, but it's a lot more to it on the actual show. It's a good show. Check it out. And Peacock is not sponsoring this video. Just, you know, check it out. But anyway. So, um, Heather and Katie go to talk. And um, Katie tries to apologize. And Heather didn't really want to hear it. Um, but Heather did um, invite her to an event that she's having. Um, probably the next episode, I imagine. Um, just as an olive branch and not really to be friends because they're not really friends but to get to know each other and then maybe be friends i don't think they're ever going to be friends though based off of the way they're shaming each other especially the way katie will not let it go um i think katie just cannot get past the fact that heather is very heather like she's snooty she's very uptight that's her personality it's nothing personal that's just how she gives it up and Katie's taking it all personally. Anyway. Um, and then Heather in her confessional strip says, I don't want to be friends with her, but I'll, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm, I'll keep it cute. I'll still invite her to things. We're still going to be cordial. Um, and then while this is happening, Gina, um, so then they come back with the group. And then Gina and Heather start talking to each other. And they talk about the conversation you know, with, with Katie. And Gina is just throwing all these passive-aggressive jabs, calling her a liar and all this stuff. It's like, girl, you started all this. And this is why people do not like you, Gina, because you started, and then you now want to, like, not take any accountability. And I will say Katie has taken some accountability because she apologized. Um, I don't think it was enough accountability, but she tried to take some. But Gina, let's not, you need to stop acting like you ain't set that girl up because you did. And everyone knows you did. And you're trying to pretend that you didn't. And it's like, girl, I don't know what reality you're in, but that ain't it. Um, but she's doing it to try to save face because uh, she doesn't want to feel the wrath of Heather. That's what it is. But anyway, so while this is happening, um, Emily and Gina, they do talk to each other. And Emily completely opens up about everything. And why, she's, and why she's so triggered by Jen. And she just apologizes. And straight up says, look, it is a me problem. It literally has nothing to do with you. I lashed out because of things that I got going on with me. I'm really trying to work on myself. And I, I, I really do believe her. I think her, she got her body to how it looks. And now she's trying to work on everything else. And if, if, I hope that's what you're doing, Heather. Not Heather. Wow. Emily. Um, because... That's beautiful if you are. If not, girl, you got more work to do. But anyway. So then um, Tamara, Shannon, and Vicky talk about the tour. Because Vicky brought up the tour. Because you know Vicky is all her, about her coins. So she's annoyed about the Trace Amigas, not you know about Tamara doing what she did. And Tamara keeps reassuring her, like, look, it was just my, it was my issue with Shannon. It had nothing to do with you. And 
Shannon is like kind of just like letting her know, like, look, you were shady as hell and did things wrong. It's basically still continuing to hold Tamara's feet to the fire, as she should. And then the conversation John Jansen pops up. And while this is happening, by the way, Gina and Heather and Katie now join them too. And they're talking about that situation as well. And in, in relation to the video, because now, I mean, everyone knows about the video thing, except for Shannon. And they're trying to keep it that way. They do not want Shannon to find out because they feel like it's going to make it worse. So everyone's basically afraid to tell her. So Tamara's kind of just asking questions like, so are you going to settle? Because the way it's being spent and the way I'm even kind of seeing it, it does seem like Shan's being blackmailed. And if she, if that's what it is, and if the, the producers have all this beaming footage of all this stuff, and Alexis being the dumbest woman on freaking planet Earth by exposing all this, you have video footage, so you, you know, be like, I'm being blackmailed. She could literally claim, I feel like with what's going on in the show, she could claim extortion and, like, not pay him anything. I, child, I would. <laughs> I'm saying. And at this point, whether I owed it to you or not, I would. Because it is nasty work. But anyway. Um, so, they're starting to get, things are starting to get heated because they're talking about John still. And so, Vicky does um, kind of talk them out of it and start talking and then talk about the Trace Amigas reuniting not as a tour but just the three of them getting along again and they do their Trace Amigas thing and okay now they're good again we for those who are long time viewers of OC this is them they break up get back together break up get back together it is the most toxic friendship I've ever seen <laughs> but heck housewives <laughs> all right and then Pretty much the rest of the episode was the game did officially begin. And um, the very first game, they did a team thing. So they had everyone on teams of three, except for like one team. They had a team of two because they had numbers. And so the, they had questions they were asked earlier at the very beginning. And they were shady questions like who's the most, um, who's a traitor, who's the who lies the most who um, is the most defensive, like things like that. And um, I thought it was going to be more shady than what it was. So what ends up happening, though, is they're asked out of er at the group answer who you think would say yeah, that you're the most this, you're the most that. So it really wasn't as shady because once they spend it and made that like a group thing, you really can just go by what the group says, whether you believe it to be true or not, it's a whole nother thing. So they kind of turned down the shadiness. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So, but long story less long, because Jen and um, Shannon, I ain't going to hold you, them two are the most self-deprecating girls of this crew. They won. Because <laughs> a lot of answers were actually like them. A lot of the answers were Shannon. And then... The last episode about the last um, question about the trader, everyone had Tamara. So anyway, so then Teddy being the host messes up immediately because basically the winners, which was Shannon and Jen, were the ones who had immunity. So they weren't going to get killed in the first round. But because Teddy just messes things up, she ended up murdering, you know, the wrong person. Um, and so Tamara was the first to go. And then the trader had to like make a correction because then the second round was just the abrupt second round of who's, who's going next. And then it'll, the next round was Shannon. And then the third round, um, was Vicky. So all three of the Trace Amigas got axed. Um, and it was like, so they're like, yeah, Trace Amigas are dead. Trace Amigas are dead. So that was, that was Teddy being shady and doing too much. And then to make it worse, then Tate, Teddy pushes Tamara into the pool 
and no one liked it. Like even Tamara was was clearly not happy with that. Nobody was happy about it. And then they were just like, okay, this is over if we're not going to do the next game. So everyone just refused to play the rest of the game. And so it sped to like the end of the game of who's a traitor. So they had to guess who the traitor was. And only two of them guessed right. And the only one that I think that no one guessed right who was still alive. And the traitor was Heather. And if you follow along at the very beginning when they got assigned, when they had their blindfolds on with the traitor thing, Heather was the one who made a comment like, I noticed she did this thing where she was doing the thing three times and then she stopped. So Heather was the one who said that. And when she said that, I'm like, oh, she's a traitor. Because <laughs> a traitor would be the one who would say something like that to get others off their sense. So everyone, a lot of people thought it was Gina. Um, and then a lot of people thought it was Jen. And Jen was not the traitor. <laughs> um, also, I'm not even sure how Jen would do on this show, but it it's kind of, I don't know if this, side note, I'm wondering if this was a combination of the producers and Tamara making this a thing, because I feel like this was a nice way to plug traders and to see who would be good on the show for the following seasons. Tamara, this is why we don't like your your producer's pet. But anyway, that does in this recap. Like I said, not much happened here. Um, I don't know what's happening in the next episode because the mix the mid season trailer is what aired. So I guess that pretty much concludes this. Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner. Probably next time you see me, my hair might be different. Actually, it's going to be different because I'm about to go out of town soon. So I got um, it's been natural for a little bit and, you know, just to let things breathe. And then we're going to do the braids because we're going to your girls going on vacation. And that's that on that. But anyway, that concludes the video. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mellow Nostalgic Runner. And I will see you next time. Bye. Welcome again to Melanin Nostalgia Runner know, channel, on um, YouTube channel. Uh, my name is Sharon. Today, the series that I wanted to present to you all is the Train With Me series. Thinking about doing this training series, I was going to start when I started training for a race.